everyone and happy Saturday. I am Margaret Ann and I'll be your host for the next little bit. So let's have some fun. Welcome to Undefined Behavior, a showcase and speedrunning marathon centered around queering games and queerness in games. For this marathon, we're exploring different glitch, unusual and marathon unsafe runs, as well as adjacent and related queer gaming content. We queer games when we reject limits and rules, and when we play in atypical ways, and when we read diversity into stories and themes. It's the very first Undefined Behavior Marathon, and we're so excited to share all these games and showcases with you. We had amazing an amazing day yesterday. Sorry, still in coffee percent. And we're not even 24 hours into the marathon, and we've already raised over $2,000 for the Trevor Project. We're halfway to our goal, but we can probably exceed that today. Thanks to everyone who's donated so far, and we genuinely appreciate your generosity. And we have lots of wonderful content for you today, but we're going to start out with Zelda 2, Adventure of Link, New Leaderboard Percent, with Meg Mac Attack, Enchantress of Numbers, and Cloudy Shoe. MCC will commentate. I'll let MCC explain what all that entails. Uh, well, they asked me to on this specifically because I know literally nothing about the run. So I think that they just happen here to make surprise noises when weird things happen. <laughs> All right. I'll, ex I'll explain what's going on. So um, I'm Meg Mac Attack. Um, and uh, what our goal here today is to make a new category. And kind of what we want to show is that um, getting into, like, creating new things in speedrunning is not as hard as I think some people think. Um, there are, at least in some games, things like category extension boards, which are a little easier to get a run on. Um, and that's what we're doing. We're going to make a run that will meet the rules of the Zelda 2 category extension board, which is that two runs need to be made for that, um, cat that proposed category. Um, and uh, we're going to have three. We're going to do them all simultaneously. These will be the first three recorded runs of this category that we're doing. Um, and that category is uh, any percent no healer glitch, which is a glitchy run that does not use the double frame perfect healer glitch in order to get into Glitch Town. Uh, it actually uses a trick that was in Nintendo Power back in like 1989, I think, or so, um, which is that you can jump into the HUD and ferry in one of the towns and get into Glitch Town, and we can go do some magic from there. And it's kind of a little more accessible than the real any percent of Zelda 2, which is a very challenging run. Um, so it's going to be me um, doing this, and also Eon, who is a world record holder in several uh, Zelda 2 categories. Cloudy Shu, who is relatively newer to Zelda 2 speedrunning. Um, and we have MCC uh, along for the ride, uh, as someone who is relatively recently learning glitch glitchy stuff in Zelda 2. Um, and is a fan of the game, as far as I know, is a pretty strong fan of the game. Um, I did. I did try. I, I actually tried to do the any percent for the first time last week. I learned the route really, really well, except for the healer glitch, which I was completely unable to do over a long, uh, long streaming session. <laughs> it's it's hard to learn. It's it's once you get it the first time, it gets a lot easier from there. But it's really hard to learn, like when you start out. So there's a training ROM for it, actually, which I think Enchanters of Numbers helped make. Yeah, I helped find the memory values that it the need to be like the correct value when you do those inputs. So I helped find those so that it can give the indication to the player. Yep, um, Cloudy, you wanna you wanna say hi as well? Hi, I'm Cloudy Shu. I'll probably be saying oof a lot. <laughs> Cloudy does say oof a lot, it's true. All right. I think that with that, we're going to get started. Um, none of us have super strongly practiced this run. Um, it's not like we like practiced this for days, got PBs in it, and then now we're just going to like blow it away. Um, I, in particular, haven't really started learning the route until last night while I was doing restreaming for the, the marathon. So uh, this should be interesting. 
Yeah, I wrote up the route and then intentionally did not practice anything for it. So, <laughs> um, oh yeah, and uh, I guess one other thing is that we will probably be doing slightly different routes. Uh, we'll be doing varying degrees of uh, safeties. I think Eon is probably going for relatively few. Um, I'm going to go for kind of a medium amount of safeties, and I think Cloudy is going to do candle. Yeah, I'm going to do candle and get a couple hearts. Yeah, so we'll um, we'll be doing slightly different routes, and that'll be kind of interesting to see like different approaches to it. Um, so yeah, I think um, if everybody's ready, we can uh, count it down. Uh, Andy, do you want to do the honors of counting us down? Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Normally, at this point, you would be going to the town on the right there that Kadushu is entering. Yeah. And going all the way to the left of, uh, all the way to the left of the screen here, into that woman that Kadushu just passed. Uh, is getting her to enter the window instead of the door, and then when you go in the door, you're in some kind of weird nightmare city. <laughs> instead, Cloudy is going for uh, the shield, which is. First spell you get in the game, it's I think one of the only two spells that you get for free without having to do something weird. Um Panthers of Numbers is going for the the statue that gives you the, the jump spell. Is it the only I, Fire and Shield for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's right. I think um well, anything oh. on the eastern continent, you need to have additional magic containers to acquire. Mm -hmm. That's true, too. I need to keep my foot off the split button. <laughs> so another thing about this category is it is an up A category, unlike the, if, you're, if you're mostly used to the, the main category of Zelda 2, which is all keys, uh, you will be used to people not ever up a -ing. Um, this is a category where we absolutely have to, or it would not really... Well, no, this one you could do. You could do, but it wouldn't be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you wanted to get Candle. <laughs> yeah, a lot no. of walking out. Yeah, there would be a lot of walking <laughs> out, of, out of palaces and stuff. Um, we're not going to place a single gem. If that's another thing that you're you're used to uh, from Zelda Two runs, we are we are not going to place a single gem. We are going to enter two palaces uh, and get two items out of them, but that's about it. Notice that um, occasionally one of the runners is run entering these blue rooms, like Enchantress of Numbers is in right now. Uh, so uh, this is a lot of the rooms in the game have no lights, and either they're completely dark uh, or you get the candle. Uh, but speedrunners just know where everything is. Uh, <laughs> I think she was going with the candle, which I, I think is not a, a bad plan. When I was trying the any percent run, I did get the candle. Um, it's, it's it's not that hard to learn the uh, not that hard to learn the dark rooms. It's a source of difficulty, and if you're already learning a new route, I mean, it's, it's nice to to get like the, the unique parts of the route down before you make sure you can do the. The technical part of the dark rooms. One one thing about this this run and any percent is that there's actually relatively few rooms to learn. Um, dark. Um, the hundred percent no major glitches run. Um, or sorry, not hundred percent. Any percent no major glitches run uh, is quite a bit longer. Involves a lot more dark rooms. Um, if you don't get candle. Um, Um. Wow. All right. That's an early death. Do we have a moment for some donations? Yeah, absolutely. We had fifteen dollars come in from Matt the Sprat, who says a hole in the ceiling in my Victorian home's bedroom can't stop me from donating to this extremely worthy cause. And we also had fifty dollars come in from. Rabash, uh, 319 
says, Gotta love Zelda 2 and finding new categories for speedruns. Also, shoutouts to Meg, who really did so much work to pull this marathon together. Good luck, runners! Oh, thanks, Ash. I'm getting probably the only safety I'm getting in this run, and that's the life spell. I think you should get fire. <laughs> Definitely should get fire. It looks like y'all, the first thing on y'all's route is to get the hammer. Yes. Yeah, the hammer is real important. It's what lets you get the medicine, so you can get the fairy spell, which enables the rest of the shenanigans. Yeah, getting um, in uh, categories like this one, getting um, the hammer really quickly is kind of like in Zelda 1, where um, getting the ladder really quickly is super helpful. Um, ladder and then ra or raft, then ladder. Um, so the, the speedruns that can do it um, tend to make a beeline for... For the hammer, uh, because it really opens up the game a lot. So I got a uh, 200. Has... Well, Enchantress says the Heron during Death Mountain. Um, if you want to get the hammer, you basically what you're supposed to do is jump, so you can get out of the open. You're not. You're supposed to get uh, jump and candle, so you can get out of the opening area. The designers apparently thought it was impossible to get out of the opening area without jump or uh, candle. So it's um, actually possible to damage boost in Jump Cave and not use the jump spell, but if you don't have the candle, it's real hard to time that. Healer glitch percent version that they're intentionally not doing um, your first trip to uh, first trip to Glitch Town spits them out at the other end of Death Mountain, so they go in through the back door. Um, but this way, they're this time they're going through the front door. It makes it look a little bit more like a normal category. And I got a 50-50 drop in uh, P1 that allowed me to leave at 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Nice. I actually have no idea what the leveling is like if you go to Palace 1 first and how it differs yeah. from doing Dark. Uh, if you don't get a bag, you can get... Two Two one one, um, and if you wanted to, you could get like forest bag and have two one two. Hmm. Just want to note the link they gave me to watch this. I'm getting the uh, getting the audio feeds for all three of these streams at once, plus a mixer. So I'm in, I'm enjoying some lovely experimental <laughs> music right now. <laughs> that sounds very you. <laughs> Say thing. At some point, all three of you are going to be on a on boards that have the same music, and it's gonna it's just gonna sound awesome. There will there's a very good chance there will at least be some overlap in Grand Palace because even glitched Grand Palace is fairly long. So now you can see what uh, Jump Cave actually looks like <laughs> in the when it's not in the dark. The wrong way. Handle was not intended. <laughs> Oof. All right. Yeah, I've I've made it to the hammer once. Uh, doing the dark route, so <laughs> definitely not for a race. <laughs> there is actually a, a tournament going on right now um, for a, the 100% No Major Glitches category, which is a, another relatively new um, category. It was added to the leaderboards um, uh, maybe two years ago at most. I'm not sure exactly how long. Um... But it's the tournament is kind of being run to like get more people to run it because it's a it's also a, a like decent entry level category into the game. I think 
what I hope is that this will be like a glitched entry level category in the same way that that is a not glitched entry level category. One thing about how um, speedrun categories work is that the uh, run of this technically counts as an any percent run, right? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's nice to have. It's nice to have a way of doing something on the any percent board that uh, that for difficult to do. The in Zelda three, there's kind of a comparable thing where the the any percent run uh, beats the game in a minute and a half. Involves a long series of frame perfect uh, or pixel perfect or whatever t tricks to get through a wall, or you can uh, can do the three minute version, which uh, involves jumping off a ledge and then you can save and continue, and then on your next run you can just fall through the floor. And uh, the result of this is that if you look at the 80% speed run, a student board, there are hundreds of people. With, uh, between uh, 2 minutes 55 seconds and 3 minutes because it's just really easy to do that one run. So, it's cool that there is now an option for doing that for Zelda 2 as well. Mm -hmm. It is sad to have a glitch run where you need to know Bagu, though. Oh, heck. <laughs> I think Bagu's a cool dude. Well... What? Oh. oh, did you game over in Hammer Cave? I game over to the Mew in Hammer Cave. <laughs> On the way oh, out. No. Oh no, that's like the worst. I didn't get the hammer yet. Oh, oh you no. didn't get the hammer yet, okay. Wow, that's actually even worse than the worst, okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, oh, you have to go back just to get that magic container, but no, actually, you have to go all the way back through. part about knowing Bagu is then you have to talk to like the one PC uh, NPC in the game that you can't cancel their text. It's true. That is a very annoying thing about Bagu. Well, that's not an annoying thing. Bagu is fine. It's, it's the river man who insists yeah. that you listen to him. Just like oh, you. I have checked. <laughs> you do, do you? <laughs> the Aikman in Jump Cave was doing some non-standard shenanigans. These are going to be some great runs to put on the leaderboard. Um, so one thing uh, is that uh, because there's only so many levels that you actually can successfully take in here, um, you can actually do some despawns of some enemies to make it a little bit easier on you. Um, mostly by just walking out of and back into rooms, uh, which is kind of funny. Yeah, I was going for, and I was going to get Magic 4 out of there, and I think killing the extra enemies to do that was what uh, I took some extra hits. And... Oh yeah. I'm aiming for 2-3-3 uh, three, three out of Death Mountain. Uh, I, was, I was going for 2-4-2. How many magic encounters do you need to finish this run? Uh, you need uh, all but one. Yeah, okay. Unless, so you could actually, I believe, I haven't checked the Oof. numbers lately, but I... Actually, that might not be true with the magic level we're getting. In the New Game Plus version of this run, you can actually skip one of those magic containers, but then you have to route a blue jar drop in uh, Great Palace, which is not really marathon safe. So that death that I just took was deliberate. Um, it was to death warp me back to the beginning of the room, basically. Uh, because I'm going to up A as soon as I get the magic container that's down here. Um, so I don't need all my lives. I, I will lose them anyways, so... So shout out to playing with Meg Mats. <laughs> oh. 
I died in the room everyone dies in, so it's fine. <laughs> Wait, which room is that? Oh. Um, the the Korea. Death Mountain Korea. Yeah. Yeah. That Korea is the worst. It really is. Am I the first one to hammer? You yeah. are, because I wow. came over. <laughs> That was, that's an unexpected turn. <laughs> oh god, and then I forget what I'm doing next. But now I'm for sure gonna get magic four, so... <laughs> Congrats. I did get my 2-3-3 three, three out of Death Mountain. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of Zelda 2, um, like... Oh, this, this heart container I'm going for right now is a, a safety. Although I should have actually done it later, because it's actually going to be the thing to get right now. Um, this heart container is a safety. It's not necessary for the route, but it does make things a little bit easier, especially in uh, Palace 3. We go into Palace 3 with very little levels, um, so it can be quite a pain. Uh, very easy to get hit and take lose like almost all of your health. Um, Zelda 2 categories, like Zelda 2 speedrunning, is very much built around levels. Um, how you, how you like, do your leveling plan is one of the most important things in the, in any given speedrun of the game. One thing about this category is in order to actually do it, you need to have at least magic level 5, uh, and 7 heart, con or magic containers when you go into Great Palace. Yep. Um, which means actually that um, this is one of the only this this type of category that does glitch things um, is the glitch categories are basically the only categories of this game where you actually grind. Um, game is actually structured in a way that lets you almost always avoid grinding if you're speedrunning it and you know how to level appropriately. Um, which makes it kind of unusual among RPG-ish kind of games. Uh, notably, like, there's a very, fairly, a somewhat similar game called uh, Battle for Olympus, um, kind of at least somewhat based on this game to some extent, and it, it is a grindy game. You, for any speedrun category of it, you have to grind a huge amount. Um, and that was pretty common in games like this, I feel like, at the time, so... Um, but in this category, we do have to do a little bit of grinding. Oh, dang it. Normal, uh, the normal any percent run does have a, a grind split. Is this one? Yes, it's, it's the exact same grind. Um, once we Very get long. to Darunia on the Eastern Continent, uh, the run is essentially identical to the any percent run. I accidentally took attack 3 instead of magic 4, so I'm a oh little frustrated no. with myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got... I'm, uh, I just got hammer at 243. Okay, so Cloudy won't have to grind very much, if no. at all. Yeah, not too much. Just get the 500 bag and get a couple orange Lizalfos. Do you even need that much? Yeah, because, well, if it's you're going like... to take out the, uh, if you get the pea bag and the uh, blue gorilla, you only need 500 XP before you go into the cave for the pea bag. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm taking the other route. Yeah, the, there are two alternate ways to to do the finish off the grind. One of them involves killing a somewhat difficult enemy at the end of uh, the caves in Valley of Death. The other one uh, just grinds a little more. So a lot of this early part of the game is just collecting things, which is not the most exciting thing necessarily. Mac is going uh, is in the town where you get a fairy and the downstab, which downstab is definitely the most fun part of the game. Yeah, um, also required. Um... Does he use it with the glove? Yes, uh, you need to use it with the glove in Grand Palace. Um, 
I don't know if you ever need to use downstab before that, Eon, do you know? Um, no, because, uh, so, if we did have a technical low percent category, um, you could technically beat the game without downstab if you went the alternate Grand Palace route. Yes, um, which involves damage boosting up a wall. Yes. But no one really does uh, no downstab runs. Or wait, no. I guess technically if you were going to do a low percent, you would want to do it with no downstab because doing it without getting jump um, <laughs> is going to be a real pain. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that, that involves, in a low percent run especially, that involves doing the... Um, the damage boost that Eon was talking about earlier. This is damage boost without major glitches. Um, yeah, the, the the damage boost in Jump Cave, and that also means you don't have a uh, candle for it. Right. So you can't actually see what you're you're trying to damage boost off of. Getting to see why nobody does this. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a challenging run. I know that there was um there's like a video somewhere of someone managing to do an in the dark damage boost in jump cave, um, but they rocked their cartridge so that it would glitch out the graphics a little bit, um, so that they could actually see it, and it still took them like an hour or something. Yeah, I think that was the Sorry? So when I asked about low percent before, uh, everyone basically told me that there's there kind of isn't really a low percent category because no one can agree on what the low percent would be. Right. Yes. So I know there's one uh, person um, who has done uh, what he calls... Well, so there's also low levels. The, um, the lowest levels you could actually complete the game with are one two one but that requires some frame perfect key grabs and up a's which is real difficult to do so in practice the lowest anyone has ever uh recorded a run of has been one two one um or i'm saying one three one sorry and so there's a a runner who has done what he calls low percent one three one where he um doesn't get the downstab and uh, doesn't get anything unnecessary and beats it at levels 131 uh, using no major glitches. I think Big Mac is coming up in the glove. Uh, I should have. I already got the glove. Um... I'm heading towards uh, getting the raft right now. What was your first uh, fairy glitch in this in this run? Uh, when I get over to the eastern continent, I will be um, doing a HUD glitch uh, pretty quickly once I get over there. Um, this Palace 3 part is, is honestly one of the scariest parts of this, just because everything in here hits very, very hard. I'm just going to jump over the, uh, the entire foyer of this, uh, this uh, Palace, just because it's easier to do that. And I don't really need to deal with the magic, so... Um, I actually also took an extra safety, which I will, would only take if it kind of comes up, which is that I got attack 3 while going through Palace 2. Um, that's kind of luck-based, and you won't always be able to do that without going way out of your way. So, um, it's convenient that I was able to, but it's not something that you would want to rely on, uh, at least using this route. 
But it does mean that um, there are opportunities to like finish this with higher levels than, than the traditional any percent does. Um, the any percent doesn't really have a lot of opportunities to get like extra levels. Bad at those audio cue boulder breaks this morning. Oh, okay. I just died to a bot punching me into lava, as you do. Bots are the worst enemies because they're so random, and when you pair them with lava, it's a real deadly uh, combination. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do a trick right now, um, which is called uh, Magic Pixel, uh, which is where you like one tap your way down a wall um, so that you can um, basically ferry while well, well, ferry, so that you can ferry your way over an enemy in those passages. If you just go normally, you can't actually uh, get over them without getting hit. Uh, and getting hit by that blue iron knuckle is is particularly bad. Um, uh, it, it hurts. I, I think it might even kill you at like life two, just to get yeah. hit once. Um, I'm gonna try to do since I have don't I didn't get the red jar at the entrance to Palace Three. I'm gonna try to do my favorite glitch, which is the door despawn. Oh, nice. So. Uh, it's actually slower to do it, but it's such a good glitch. Actually, oh, I don't need to because I can grab the key. I still feel like I should. You should. Definitely should. Okay, even though I grabbed the key, I'll go do the door despawn. I'm or at least I'll attempt it. If I get an iron knuckle out of the statue... Um, oh, okay. Hey, we got it. So, the important thing is you gotta get that red jar from that statue. You collect it, leave, and come back, and now the door's gone. No. So I was trying to do what's called an encounter skip, uh, but I failed it twice. Uh, this one I'm definitely gonna go for, even if I fail it a few times, though. Um... Oh wow, okay. <laughs> I am in some serious danger here right now because I have no health and the everything here hit hurts. Okay, so I'm going to be doing um, the fairy glitch in the HUD. Uh, just in a second here. Um, I'm going to be going onto the screen. Trying to do a trick called super jump uh, and failing, so I'm going to go the long way around. Um, go up on top of these, and then um, I'm going to jump up into the HUD, and I'm going to cast fairy. And this this was legit in Nintendo Power in the 80s that you could do this. They had no idea what you could do with it at the time. Um, it was a mystery to them, uh, but in the last I guess 10 years or so at the most, uh, people... <laughs> For purposes of this run, what's most important is that every time you go through a door in Glitch City, it spews some garbage into memory. And after you go through the doors a certain number of time, you get something called Scroll Lock, which is going to stick... You're going to keep Scroll Lock for the rest of the game, I assume. Ah, uh, yes. You'll see and... it being very different than the Oof. Nick back oh. screen. Messed up the fairy key. Alright. The entire rest of the game, nothing, uh, at no point will the floor under Link's feet resemble the collision that that should be experienced. Uh, yes, and we can do wrong warps with it, which you just, which I just demonstrated by wrong warping from 
uh, the Durinia entrance over to this um, this entrance down here. We're gonna do that a couple more times. So uh, I just did a fairy warp in Palace Three, which uh, does nothing in this category, but in <laughs> except for get you a ceiling walk. But um, in New Game Plus for, uh, versions, you can cast fairy a second time, and you can skip this entire lava room. Okay, and now now I'm at the grind part. Um, I'm gonna be grinding up to get uh, magic four and five hundred XP. Um, and I'm looking for these small encounters because for some reason when they localized this game, they made it so that the small encounters here give more XP than the big encounters. Um, and have easier enemies to kill, but they give you more. Oh, and then I'm going to die for no reason also. Do we have a second for another quick donation? Yeah. So we have $5 from Frozen Flygon, who says, It was so incredible meeting Chantress of Numbers and Mega GDQ, and thanks to all the ECC people who are accepting and wonderful to me as someone new to speedrunning Ben 2. Bring back Sin Truck, Heart, donating to name Yang, Bean, for FF4 NES. So we have some other people who still need names. Tella and Porum, if you feel like donating to those bid wars. But thank you for your donation. Thank you for everything, Fire. Visual cues are different between the two uh, <laughs> skull walks, and I jumped right into the water on an encounter because of that. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, you need to jump at the L. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I jumped just after the cloud, which is what I do in alt scroll lock, and that was the exact wrong spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sadly Miyamoto did not put a, a useful cloud in in that screen for us. So it turns out in, when you're in Glitch Town, there are two different doors that you can enter, and those two doors, if you enter in a different sequence, you can get different effects. And... Um, for speedrunning purposes, a lot of the other categories that get more things do a slightly variation or a slight variation on it, where they um, basically uh, enter the second door one time, and that has the impact of not uh, breaking some of the enemy spawning and stuff. So then it's easier to like get certain items and spells. Uh, all right, so and now I am at the end of Valley of Death, which is one of the most obnoxious parts of this game, and I just skipped it completely uh, by going in a door in a swamp and coming out the last exit to Grand Palace. Um, and I'm gonna fight this Lizalfos that I'm horribly undermatched for. And it's gonna take a lot of hits, but we'll get our last magic level. And um, this is one level more of life and uh, attack than I would have in an any percent run. Um, and now I'm going into Grand Palace and I'm up aing because this is the only place you can up aing and not lose your progress. Um, and we're going to go on a, a weird magical adventure through Grand Palace. <laughs> where nothing looks like it's supposed to. Yay, weird magical adventures! Well, I'm afraid to- I'm afraid to ask about this in case it's but I'm trying to figure out exactly how these- these exits work. So is, are the exits linked to the pages? Yes. Okay. So the page- the first page is the left exit, the next page is the down exit, then the next page is the up exit, and then the right exit. So it just d depends which, how far you've scrolled the screen when you exit to the left uh, determines which uh, exit it actually sends you to. So Eon, you have a chance to catch up now. <laughs> I forgot something. Here. I'm grinding on that blue Lizalfos in the dark, so... Yeah, uh, I forgot to get one of the magic containers. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Oof. 
Oh, so I'm ba about to enter uh, Great Palace. So. Oh, my splits are wrong. <laughs> just for the record, when when the game actually outright wrong warps you, is does that mean that they just didn't have anything set for the uh, the down exit, and then you took it anyway? Oh. So I... the way that um, so it, it'll default if there's not the, if there's not an exit defined, it defaults you to uh, exit zero, which is for whatever memory bank that is. Um, and in palaces, that brings you to the entrance, basically. Um, but palaces one, two, and five share a memory bank, and so it's always the entrance to palace one that it sends you to, regardless of which palace, or if you're in uh, three, four, or six, it sends you to the entrance of uh, palace three. Um, but then, like, in caves where we wrong warp all over the place, um, what's going on there, actually, is the way the game handles, um, uh, like, exits back to the overworld in the caves is just doing some index math. Um, there's not really a define... There's You don't really define the exit, it's just based on what the cave, like, index is, or the exit index is. So, uh, essentially, you're uh, increasing the index by three, typically, when you wrong warp from a cave. And that's how we're able to wrong warp from Death Mountain to Maze Island. Know what exactly is happening when you fairy warp in the HUD? Um, so I ha I actually do have a bit of knowledge on that, and it has to do with um, the way the game handles Link going out of, like, off screen. So, um, if you actually, uh, oh shoot. If you actually, like, jump up the top of the screen, um, you link, if there's no floor below, Link will actually loop up to the bottom, um, but Link's sprite won't be visible um, because of the way the... Oh, gosh. I need to up A because I took too many deaths. Um... So there's a basically like a memory flag that it uses to track um, which way Link went off screen and whether or not it needs to trigger the um, falling animation. Um, and so there are ways to trigger that um, by jumping up to the top if you mess around with the memory in like an emulator or something like that. Um, and that's essentially what's happening when you cast Fairy in the HUD. Uh, is it's just the, the way the game uh, tracks whether it needs to do that or not. It's really amazing to me in like the Zelda 2 runs or some of the Pokemon runs where like kind of not thinking about you're thinking about the game as like a technical object you're thinking about in terms of like what the actual memory is doing almost more so than you're actually thinking about like yeah uh oh the game is it supposed to be played or the the game world they were trying to present to yeah big mac is requiring scroll lock when when I was trying to learn this, um, it seemed like the consistent rule was you'd walk in the left side of a room when you had scroll lock. You'd get to like a, a certain line, like usually only a few steps in, and like all the graphics would change all at once. Does that mean you're on page two? Uh, the... Typically, yeah, that's when you're when you get to page two, I believe. Yeah. I guess technically it's page one because that's zero indexed, but if you're So we're seeing so many walk forward a little bit, all the graphics change, and you turn around and go off to the left side of the screen. Yep. Wow. 
Oof. I just can't do this Ikilo room today. The thing with this game is it's actually very hard. <laughs> Ikilo is a jerk. Though, <laughs> so. Uh, uh. Never heard him called Ikilo before. That's interesting. But. It's, um, yeah, it's an affectionate speedrunner nickname for. Anyway, that that dude will will mess you up pretty bad even if you are fully leveled and the, the, the runners today are extremely under leveled um i think you'll see cloudy doing a fairly safe are you doing your safe strat cloudy uh no that takes forever oh okay. got attack two <laughs> valid yeah, okay they take like a million hits <laughs> They take, uh, what is it, four attack eight hits, or two thunder casts. Neither of which I have right now. <laughs> uh, this room that I'm in right now is actually my least favorite room in Grand Palace, though. So uh, The I did, first waffle room. I did a little extra grind, though, to get to life four. I probably could have done it faster by going through the uh, swamp cave, but I went through the Casudo one that takes you directly to GP. I'm curious, are y'all playing on NESs or on emulators? Or... Uh, I'm playing on an AV Famicom. Uh, I'm playing on, a, on an NES as well, a top loader US NES. And I'm playing on the, uh, the toaster. I know, I dislike that it's called the toaster, because it's, it's horizontal. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm really tired, so thoughts just come out of my head, apparently, but... I made it past Bikula, finally. I never liked that name very much. The toaster, not the top loader? No, toaster is the front loader. Because you put it in like toast, but I mean, who's ever seen a toaster like that? Toaster, oven. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Okay. Um, still okay though, because I took that extra life. Hey, I remembered not to uh, stab that rope. <laughs> yeah. Those ropes are jerks. Okay, I'm past Beak Hill. Hooray! However, I've been dying to Dark Link in my tet in my practices, so. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> which is which is bad. Like Dark Link should not be the hard part. Um, I mean, if you don't know the tricks, then Dark Link is very hard, but. You just gotta manipulate. Mm hmm I didn't get fire either, and fire, as we know, is essential to beating Dark Link. Correct. Jump's queued up. So here I'm gonna do Thunderbird Skip. Well, I had to do some waiting around, but I got through Bikula first try. Nice. Bot, King, Bot, King, Bot. So that was Thunderbird, and now entering Dark Link. This is how this fight always looks. Yeah, um, some of the some of the way that you manipulate the screen uh, is deliberately to make it so you can go under King Bot without getting hit. Uh, it's not actually that important for any other purpose. It's just with no up stab, uh, it's harder King. to get through King no. Bot. That was. Uh, is that new? And new I WR? Uh, yeah, by my time, yep. forty-three fifty-three, uh, and 
the uh, lower limit of this run is much faster than that. Yeah, probably probably around uh, 20 minutes, I think. Maybe 22 or something? I don't know. Yeah, and you have to submit it to the leaderboard, though. You know that, right? I will. <laughs> I, I will uh, make the page... Um, and once the video is ready to, we have the link for the video, I'll submit all our runs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Whew, I almost scrolled the screen right before the drop. All right. There we go. Did Which would not have been good. <laughs> wow, we, we all finished in kind of a, a nice sequence here, despite all of our different routings and safeties and stuff. Is that the nice thing about safeties is you don't die. Well, there was a little bit of that, even with the safeties, I think. Although, I don't know, I guess... Cloudy maybe managed to avoid dying. Or game well, overing. Yeah, I didn't game over. I died a lot. I... I... <laughs> up at least twice when I didn't technically really need to, so... But it would have been a lot slower not to. But I'm counting those as effectively game overs. Oh yeah, my time was 44, 43, 39. Pretty close considering everything that went on in both our runs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These were kind of disastrous runs, honestly. And that's yeah. the final time. Means that uh, that just means that the, the viewers watching are now free to go and, and claim the world record for themselves. Yes. Yeah, this, this world record you can have to, it, easily you have to do it. You just have to remember uh, what the route through East Grand Palace is. All, all y'all watching, y'all y'all got that right right now. <laughs> uh, so that was that was time, by the way. Um, free streamer. Okay, I think mine was something like forty-five, forty-nine, or st around there. Yeah, I had live split running as well, so that's how I figured my time. All right, that that is our new new category of Zelda Two. Um, I think it's a it's a fun category. It's a little bit like searching for things, like finding things and getting them. It's a bit fetch questy, but. Um, if you want to get into glitched runs of Zelda 2, which are a lot of fun, and they, they go, the skill ceiling is very, very high on them. Um, but I think that this lowers the bar, like, creates a little bit more of an accessible entry point to the, the concept of a glitched Zelda 2 run. Really cool. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you for hanging out with us while we did it, Andy. Um, yeah. you gonna, you gonna try this? I'm, well, I'm, I'm going to... One more weekend trying to learn the uh, the healer glitch, and if I can't learn the healer glitch, then yeah, I'm gonna try this wrong. That's <laughs> quite an option. Fair enough. I have a little bit of a, you know, I have, I have a bit of a dream of figuring out what the the most the the lowest effort any percent is for all the different Zelda games, and uh, trying to one of those to figure out a way to beat OT without doing anything difficult. <laughs> All right, I think uh, that is that is it for us. Um, so yeah, yeah. Thank Thanks you, a million. Much. Thanks a million. Yeah. <laughs>
So while I'm getting everything else set up, let's remind you 